thanks for coming back. This is Rob O'Brien. Uh, I work currently for Cloud for Good as a managed services consultant, which is in the Salesforce arena. But my past life, I was a uh, recruiter for over 15 years, both privately and in the corporate setting. And joining me again is my friend Jean, and I'm going to let her talk briefly about herself. Hello everyone, I'm Jean Stoner. I'm currently a freelance um, career consultant. Um, I've written hundreds and hundreds of resumes, many of them for Willow employees or Willow guests, um, as well as folks that have recently been uh, laid off. So I'm here to just share my expertise as needed. All right, and before we start, um, I thought I would share a prayer that I found uh, that was from the archdiocese, um, specifically directed at those of us that are being impacted by the um, coronavirus. For all those who have contracted the coronavirus, we, we pray for care and healing. For those who are particularly vulnerable, we pray for safety and protection. For all those who experience fear or anxiety, we pray for peace of mind and spirit. For affected families who are facing difficult decisions between food on the table or public safety, we pray for policies that recognize their plight. For those who do not have adequate health insurance, we pray that no family will face financial burdens alone. For those who are afraid to access uh, care due to immigration status, we pray for recognition of the God-given dignity of all. For our brothers and sisters around the world, we pray for shared solidarity. For public officials and decision makers, we pray for wisdom and guidance. Father, during this time, may your church be a sign of hope, comfort, and love to all. Grant peace, grant comfort, grant healing. Be with us, Lord. Amen. All right. We're going to get started here. And today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about cars. And cars, as Jean mentioned, are uh, kind of the meatier part of your uh, resume down underneath uh, where your uh, job is listed. And cars stands for challenge, action, result. Okay. So the first thing you have to think about is what was the challenge that you were uh, looking to solve or asked to take a look at? What action did you take to solve that problem? And what was the result of that? And so as you're going through this process, you kind of want to walk through this and think about uh, all the things that you've done in your job, because what you're trying to do is you're trying to sell me, the recruiter, on why I need to pass you on to my hiring managers. And these are really great um, ways to show me this is what I've actually done in the history of my job. Cars, it's all about the results. It's all, again, it's all about showing how you added value. It's the thing that's going to make me want to either email you or pick up the phone and give you a call. Um, and some examples of ways that uh, cars are, are framed within the resume are consist consistently achieved or exceeded, enhanced services, increased sales or revenues, wrote training materials, improved on documentation, Anything that you can do to show me how you added value to your company's bottom line is awesome. So where do you find these car stories? How can you, this is like your chance to brag and sometimes that's a little bit difficult for some of us. So think about things like, how were you recognized in a performance review? What were some of your best achievements in your position? What are your strengths? One of the things that uh, we highly recommend is a program online called Strength Finders Online. And it's about 1995. And it kind of gives you that idea of where are your strengths and how do, how do you tap into them. Recommendations. How were you complimented? What did people say about you? Did you ever receive uh, an award of any type for achieving something in your position? Or did you have somebody write you an email that was especially, especially uh, gratitude driven and a, a job well done? Those are all things that you should be thinking about as you're going through this process and starting to write your car statements. We're gonna go back to uh, Catherine Parker and just talk a little bit about her cars and some examples of what a car statement might look like. And so 
what we have is under her first position, she's a claims associate service adjuster. And one of the things that she tells us is she consistently exceeded daily closure goals, completing five to nine claims per day. So that statement as a recruiter, it tells me a couple of things. It tells me the volume of work that she was doing as a claims adjuster. Um, and then it tells me that uh, her goal level, she was constantly exceeding them. So it gives me a good solid picture of the type of professional that Katherine Parker might be. Uh, under her claims processing specialist, which is her position prior to the one we just looked at, um, she mastered co customer experience performance criteria, established courteous behavior on the phone, provided timely information, solved problems efficiently, and resolved escalations. So those are all things that she learned as a claims processing specialist. And again, it's, it's helping me fill in, what is that picture? Who is Katherine Parker as uh, an insurance professional? What types of things is she capable of? So we provided you a handout that you downloaded and we're hoping that you will pull it out at this time and maybe pause this video or uh, maybe at the end of the video, take some time to really sit down and think about this. And the things that you wanna walk through are, what was the challenge that I was facing was, the action I took to solve it was, and the results I achieved were, and then start writing your story and typically what you're gonna do is in a car statement, you are going to reverse the order here. When you're thinking about it, you're gonna go down this way. But when you're writing the statement, you actually wanna start most of the time with the result that you achieved and then fill in the action and the challenge um, that you were asked to face. Car stories are also really good to help you prepare for that behavioral based interview. And what I mean by that is a lot of times once you go into the interview, the recruiter is looking to ask you questions about things that you are going to want to highlight in your career and maybe expound on. So your car statement in your, in your resume is a very short snippet, but now when you go into the interview and they ask you that question about, tell me about a time when you were asked to solve a problem. What were the actions that you took and what was the result? And now you can take that car story that you started in your resume and really expound on it in your interview. The last step, and this is so critical, and I, I have a small embarrassing story to tell, but edit, edit, and edit again. Um, one of the things that I, I think happens to us is as we're looking at our resumes and we're reading it because it's our story, we tend to skim over the words and we don't always call, uh, catch all the, the typos and things of that nature. So highly recommend that you, you do spell check it, but don't trust and rely solely on spell check. That you use Google Docs to help you um, do the spell checking because it will pick up words and give you um, alternate suggestions. Grammarly is a great tool that I think, Jean, can you expound on that just for a second and tell us a little bit more about it? Your Grammarly is an app, and if you, you can download it on a computer, um, and if you, know, if you have trouble with your grammar or you're not, or English isn't your primary language, you can just download that resume, put it in Grammarly, and it'll check all the grammar for you and spelling. It's a fantastic tool. I use it with every resume I write. And is there a cost for that, Jean? I think you get some for free, and then you have okay. to pay for a service if you use it more frequently. I think that's the rule. Okay. Um, we also recommend that you uh, meet with a Willow employment counselor and have them review your resume. Um, they will take a, an eagle eye and look at it and give you feedback, maybe even help you with those car statements on revising them if it's not quite flowing well. Um, so go in and get the, the help. We're, they're here on Wednesdays, um, typically from 10 to 12, and uh, I think it's 6.30 to 8. Uh, however, during this time, uh, things are a little topsy-turvy, and so you might be able to do something online with them and, and meet them that way. Yeah, um, and then, oh, go ahead. Job. If you go to the employment site and the care center, it will tell you how to access 
an online counsel, counselor virtual, virtually until the church opens again. Great. The other thing is you can ask a family member or a friend to check it over as well, because again, they're reading it with that critical eye, not that you're not, but it's your story. And sometimes it's hard for us to catch our own mistakes. I know I'm guilty of that. I told you I had a small story. I had been sending my resume out and I actually uh, one day was looking at it and found a typo and I was horrified because <laughs> I teach this class. So I should know better. I should have had Jean look it over. <laughs> All right, cover letters. How important are cover letters? Well, I think it really depends on your recruiter. For me, cover letters were not that important. However, I'm gonna put a caveat on that and talk about this. Um, a lot of HR professionals feel that if, you're, if you don't have a cover letter or it's a poorly written cover letter or it's a generic cover letter, meaning you just copied it off the internet and you didn't personalize it at all, it's kind of like a wrinkled suit. And it, would, uh, it could be covering up a well-pressed shirt, but how would anyone know? So here's what I was saying about, so it depends on the HR professional. So I was one of those that I was more interested in what was going on in the resume, but I am not the norm, according to the Society of Human Resource Management, which is SHRM. They surveyed 600 HR professionals and learned that 76% of those HR professionals will eliminate a candidate based on the quality of the cover letter. And 43% view the cover letter as being equally as important to the resume as the resume itself. So don't go on the Rob method. Do what, what statistics are saying and really spend some time on that cover letter. Employers want to know your story. They want to know, why do you want to work for us? They also want to know, are you qualified? They also are looking for, are you a good fit? And a cover letter can help you answer those questions and more. Don't repeat the same information that's in, to, in your resume. Instead, use the cover letter to take that one step further and give the potential future employer a little bit more knowledge about you. And here's just a little hint for people that are uh, career changers. Sometimes you might have to draw the picture and the cover letter is the great way to draw the picture on how the skills of your past uh, employment can help you with the skills in this new job. Sometimes you have to draw it within the cover letter and help them understand. So this is a, a tool that Jean is recommending and I'm gonna let her speak about it uh, briefly because I personally have not used this. So go ahead, Jean. So some guests get real hung up on what is my SEO score? How do I know I have the right keywords to get to a person? And if this is a, an issue for you, you can download at the job scan app. You can enter in your resume, you enter in the job description and it'll score you. And it'll give you a detailed report of what you need to do to edit your resume to get a higher score. Now don't go too crazy with it because it's very difficult to get a high score. That's a word tweaking. Um, but it certainly is wonderful feedback, uh, certainly uh, during the second, third, fourth, fifth resume you apply for. Once you kind of get, your, get some consistency about scoring fairly high, you can stop using JobScan. But um, many people find it to be a wonderful resource. I think you get a few freebies and then they, have, they charge a service. But um, it's an option for those that are really concerned about your score. And for those of us that don't remember, SEO is search engine optimization. Remember that your first resume that you're writing is for the computer system. And so you're trying to get past um, the keyword search so that you do get into the hands of a, of a recruiter very quickly. So questions that we often hear, um, as employment counselors in the care center is how, is, how is resume writing different from proper English? Well, a couple of things that you need to know. First of all, you, it's, it's a very tight writing style, meaning I almost compare it to like journalistic writing. It's very 
who, what, where, when, why, and how, and it's not very fluffy. So leave the muscle, lose the fat, write tight. We never use pronouns in our resume. It's acceptable to use pronouns now in our LinkedIn profiles, but never in our resume. resume. Don't use possessive pronouns and minimize the articles, uh, the, a, an, et cetera, whenever possible so that you're not using up valuable space. One page or two, what about more? So for graduating students and professionals with 10 years or less experience, you should be uh, one page. If you have more than 10 years experience, it's acceptable to go to two pages, but no more than two pages. Remember, the way you write your car statements is going to give the recruiter and or the hiring manager just enough information about you so that they want to call you in for the um, interview, which is really your opportunity to shine. Um, you can always add more content to your LinkedIn profile because it's more of a storytelling platform and um, recruiters expect to see more there. Other free, frequently asked questions, uh, this is jeans in my favorite area to talk about. Um, how can I look younger on paper? So one of the first rules of thumb is only show 15 years of work history, 20 years maximum. If you're showing much more than that, it's really not taking very much for the person looking at the um, resume to decide what age bracket you're on. And let's be honest, um, there are times when ageism is an issue. Um, delete all dates for work history and education that are greater than 15 years. So what, what the recommendation is, is if you're applying for a position and you have more than 15 years of experience in that particular field, take the last 10 and put it on your resume and leave the rest off. There are a few caveats in um, I'm one of those people and Jean's husband's one of these people. So I, my uh, entrepreneurial experience is getting to the point where it's, it's becoming old and it's getting to that point where it's going to drop off my resume because it's older than 10 years. So one of the ways that uh, Jean suggested, and I think she also did it for her husband, Jeff, is to um, talk about uh, other career trajectory and kind of bullet point and write a few very brief car statements. Anything you want to add there, Jean? Right, that's exactly what you do. You put rapid career trajectory or former work experience, and you could put your title, a company, title, company. You lay it out in a line or two, and that's all you do for your former work experience if you're really hung up and you absolutely have to have it in the resume. But challenge yourself. Try to, get, try to stick to 20 years because age discrimination is real, and we've got to protect you from it. Awesome. Now let's just talk a minute about email addresses, shall we? So you should be having an email on your resume that is um, a Gmail account. And the reason is, is it's, it makes you look more current. I really wanna talk to those folks for a moment that have Yahoo, AOL, or Hotmail. I would strongly encourage you to let go of those accounts and really put together yourself a, a Gmail account. It takes five minutes maybe or less, and uh, it makes you look younger on paper. Make sure you add your LinkedIn URL um, to your resume. So, because recruiters, once they get your resume and they're thinking, oh, I'd like to kind of talk to Gene or Rob and see what they're about, they're gonna go to your LinkedIn profile and see what other information they can glean from that. Um, and then this is really funny, and Jean has a great story about this. You're only supposed to have one space after punctuation. Two spaces makes you look old. And I was trained many years ago um, in typing class to always put two spaces after a period. So when I write a resume, I always have to do a check to make sure that I'm only using one space after a period. It's, it's a big problem in my writing. I don't think I'll ever get over this one. It's, you know, space, space, right? <laughs> From old typing classes. Right. Closing thoughts that Jean and I have for you. Um, we're hoping that with these two uh, separate resume installments that we've given you, that you can write or edit your resume that's going to get you noticed. Uh, you can use our cover letter template and update it so that it's, it's personalized for your needs. Use the um, willowcreekneedsmet.org to find more resources. 
and we're hoping that you're prepared to pass it forward. If this was helpful to you, we're hoping that you let others know that this exists and that they can take it online. And hopefully someday soon we'll be back doing this in person in the class. Jean, anything else you want to add? Yeah, my last comment is you will find it at needsmet.org resume samples. So truck driver, teacher, nurse. We've tried to list, have a long list of resume samples um, and, and other, other, serve, other books. Steve Provenzenzo, who's a member of our ministry, He's written a book with many wonderful samples, resume samples. So look at them. That'll really help you write a resume quickly. And thanks so much, everyone, for participating. Um, we, we are confident that these essentials will help you be successful. And uh, God bless.